Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could join us all again. Please join us in prayer. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity of this day. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Father, our cups truly do runneth over. And as before the camera came on, you know what we are talking about and the sense of urgency that is upon all our hearts now in, in different forms in different ways, different manners. But it's all for the same course. It's for your children. It's for your children to receive the fullness of thy word. But it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. But Father, now is the time. Now is the time that we have been given to proclaim thy truth. And given that opportunity, Father, we will continue with thy hand. And we thank you for that. And we also have these unspoken prayers before you at this time. You know every heart, every need, every wish, every dream, every concern. And we thank you for not only hearing these prayers, but we thank you for answering them in perfect season. And Father, we also pray for Faye, Jody, Mrs. Holden, and all the caregivers that who help your children, Father. They, they are just, uh, they seem to be on the sidelines, but Father, they step forward and they are truly, not all, but many truly do want to help your children, and we thank you for each and every one of them. And we pray, dear Lord, also for your children to learn what it means to have peace with one another during this election season, Father, where they stop hating each other. But, Father, we know it's part of the end times, but that does not make it any easier. What does make it easier is that you give us knowledge of what to look for and what to be prepared for. But we still pray for each and every one of your children. We also pray, dear Lord, for all those who have come and gone from our chapel, that you watch over them and whatever they're doing. We pray, dear Lord, that they have not forsaken thy word and they will return to the sheepfold soon. And we thank you for all those that have recently returned. And we pray, dear Lord, always for Israel and for our nation, knowing that it will be thy kingdom that will come, to which we say, come, Lord, come. We are prepared, and we are ready, and we are getting even more prepared as we speak. And we pray for our military and our first responders, who are always on the front lines helping your children, dear Lord. And we pray for the lost, those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive thy truth. There is so much misinformation out there, Father, and we, we pray, dear Lord, that you will lead us, guide us, and direct us whenever we are able, whenever they are able to receive that truth. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see. I pray that you open up our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written by thy holy name. In Yeshua's precious holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. All right. Getting back into our Father's Word. Did you find that? I've done several verses. Okay. I'll just read that over and we'll discuss it later. Um, we're in Acts chapter 27. Basically, we're with Paul now. Paul has uh, asked the uh, Roman uh, government, we'll just say, that he wanted to go see Augustus, which is basically Caesar in Rome. Uh, why did he ask for this? Because the Lord wanted him to go there. And it's not only uh, the going there, once he gets there, but it's also the trip that he's going to be on between where he's at now and where he's going to be. And this is where we're going to pick it up today. We're going to pick it up on his, his uh, final journey, if you will, on ship to... Uh, the Roman Empire. So with that being said, chapter 27, verse 1, and it reads, And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus's band. This is basically a commander of a hundred soldiers. So we know this being a centurion, there's, centurion, there's there's actually a hundred soldiers with the whole party with Paul. And it's not just Paul, it's other prisoners as well, but it's also, as we'll see, it's uh, friends with Paul. 
uh, or disciples with Paul, if you will, because Caesar, evidently, even though it's not written here, as we'll see, he allowed this to happen, as we'll read. Verse 2. And entering into a ship of Adramitium, now, now this basically is really, this ship is not going to get them to Italy. It's basically a, a transport that will get them. This is a, a, a maritime um, ship that uh, comes from Mycia, actually, in Asia Minor. So this ship is going to get them from where they are. Remember, they started in Caesarea, and they're going out uh, on ship, and then they're heading towards Italy, but this particular ship isn't going to get them there. It's going to get them partly way there. We launched, in other words, we set sail, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, because that's where the ship basically picks up its cargo and drops off cargo and all, all along that uh, maritime uh, countryside. One uh, Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. Now this Aristarchus basically is another disciple of, of Paul's. And why was he allowed? Well, it wasn't just this Aristarchus. It was others that were going with Paul that were allowed to go with Paul. Uh, well, today we would call them like Paul's entourage, or if you will. material witnesses. Um, if he's going there for a trial, but he's under their law, he's probably allowed to bring witnesses. Well, I, I would agree with that, Ross, except for the point there was no Jews there. You would think of, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but why not also bring some other Jews with them that were against Paul? See, at this Oh, they got to buy their own ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. But the thing is, I think what happened here, remember, uh, Festus and Felix and all of them, mm -hmm. and they wanted to write something down that they could give to Caesar. So I think instead of those witnesses, like yeah. you're talking about, of uh, the Jews, it was in writing, probably, yeah. at this point. And, and they may not have wanted to go in there and stand there in person and lie. They'd rather just write their lies on a paper. Could be. But the point is, what is written, yes. Paul's got some friends with him. Yeah. But it even gets better than that, verse 3. Huh. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius, uh, that's the uh, centurion, courteously entreated Paul, or treated Paul, and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. Now think about this. Yeah. He's given Paul and his friends... Liberty meaning to get off the ship, right. go, and you got friends here, okay, go out and refresh yourself yeah. and 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 um We'll see you back here on the ship. We'll later. see you back here. Now think about that. Yeah. I mean that's tell me that's not by the hand of God. He's a prisoner. Let's not forget. He's a prisoner under the Roman coverage, but as a prisoner he's given liberty because he's a Roman citizen. And the way they look at it, a Roman citizen, if they say, I, I want to come back, they're That's going right. to come back. That's, That's right. how they look at it at yeah. this point. Verse 4. Romans don't lie. Yeah. Well, they do, but the point is, they believe Paul. Yeah. Verse 4. And when we had launched or set sail from, from thence, we sailed under Cyprus mm -hmm. because the winds were contrary. The winds were starting to to blow up a little bit so we went a little bit different direction to help the wind and to stay close to the coastline right five and when we had sailed over the sea of Sicily uh, uh, Cilicia and Pamphylia now remember this is Asia Minor we came to Myra a city of Lycia so he's given us a, basically a direction of, of where it's going. It's basically hugging the coast mm -hmm. of Asia Minor. Six. And there, at that point, and there the, the centurion found a ship of Alexandria, a different ship, sailing into Italy. So their whole point was to get to this particular area so that they could board a ship that was going to get them all the way to Italy. Mm -hmm. And he put us therein. In other words, we changed ships. Seven. And when we had sailed slowly many days, remember the wind's contrary at this point. And you're going to see what time of year this is in a yeah. moment. And scarce were come over against Sindus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete. 
this is an island, over against Salmoni, giving us uh, also uh, uh, a direction of where they were headed. They're basically leaving the coast of Asia Minor, getting to Sicily, which is farther out in the Mediterranean. Yes. And from there, they were going to try and make it to Italy. Yep. <clears throat> but it wouldn't work out that way. Uh oh. Verse 7. Um, I did 7. Did I do 7? Mm -hmm. 8. And hardly passing it, hardly getting past it, came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens. Now, this isn't at the, uh, the Fair Havens is at the island of Crete. Right. Nigh whereunto was the city. Lassia. So he's given us a direction. This township uh, outside of uh, or by this island of Crete. Now, verse nine says, when much time was spent, doesn't say how long, except, and when sailing was now dangerous. In other words, it's getting to the point of time of year yeah. that all sa uh, sailors knew yeah. that at that particular time it was getting more dangerous to to cross the Mediterranean. Right. Because, the here it is, the fast was now already passed. Now this fast was the Jews' great day of atonement time. So it's late September or somewhere exactly. there? Exactly. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's that period of yeah. time when certain things start occurring in that region. Yeah. Paul admonished them. That doesn't mean got down on him, it's, it basically it means that he's advising them. Hmm. Now let's not forget, is Paul a sailor? No. No, but he he's around a lot of them. Well, he is around a lot of them, but the point being is, he, he's he's not in charge. I mean, this is a big ship now. Oh, no, no, no. There's, there's like 276 people on this thing. Yeah. A hundred of them are soldiers. Yeah. And, the, uh, and they got prisoners, then they got the ship personnel. <clears throat> and the point being is, Paul doesn't really know the ins and outs of sailing across, especially the Mediterranean, right. especially this time of year. But what does Paul have? Paul has our Father. And he and our Father has Paul's ear. So what, what he's given, he's going to proclaim. So in verse 10, and said unto them, this is Paul saying unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt or be with danger and much damage, not only of the lading or the cargo and ship, but also of our lives. So our father gave Paul the... Um, knowledge of what's going to happen if certain things don't, if they don't do certain things that they should be doing. But you got to understand, Paul's just a Roman citizen in the, in the ship's mentality. You know, the captain and the sailors and all that. Oh, who's this guy telling us how to run our ship? That's right. This is the first time he's ever been on this thing. And he's telling us, so you got to understand their mentality. But Paul, Paul, knowing our Father and knowing when our Father speaks, he and he listens, and then what does he do? He proclaims what he's given. He's not withholding anything. Right. Verse eleven. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master. That means the master of the ship, right. and the owner of the ship. Well, yeah more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And you can understand, I mean, I mean, how could you not understand that? I mean, these people are, are professional sailors. And Paul's not a professional sailor, and he's come to say, hey, you guys, if you guys continue, you're, you're, you're going to get hurt. You know, as a matter of fact, you might even die. And they're going to speak at all as a prisoner. Whether he be Roman citizen or not. Well, he's given a lot of liberty, being to. Paul. But um, for him to say that to the captain and the crew, mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. You, let's say you're taking a cruise, just any old cruise today, and you go on ship with 6,000 other people. And you, hey, I need to see the captain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, captain, uh, you, we can't go to the Bahamas. And you go, well, why can't you go to the Bahamas? Because if you do, you're going to run into a lot of problems. As a matter of fact, you, people might even die. That's right. Would he believe you? No. no. 
you know, you would think, now, if you say, well, I heard of God, well, guess what, eventually, not here, at this moment, but eventually, Paul's going to introduce them to God. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Verse 12. We're all getting an introduction one day. And because the haven, remember where they were, the haven was not commodious to winter in. In other words, it wasn't a good place. Remember, it's getting close to winter. Got the time of uh, atonement. The more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice, and there to winter. Mm -hmm. That's a better port to winter in. Mm -hmm. Safer. Which is an haven of Crete, still on the island of Crete, mm -hmm. it's just on the other side. Right. And lieth toward the southwest and northwest of where they were at that point. That's where they wanted to go. Right. They said, well, you know, it, it's getting, we know it's getting bad time weather. The sailors knew this, and this is where we're going to go. We're going to lay up there until winter's over, and then we're going to go to Italy. Good plan. You would think, but that's not what Paul told them. Verse 13. That's not what our father gave Paul. Verse 13. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, in other words, hey, this is a good time to take off, loosening fence, they sailed close by Crete. Hey, they took off. Hey, we're staying close to land. Yeah. After all, they were just going to go on the other side. That's right. But, verse 14, <laughs> not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eroch Lydon. Huh. You know what that word means? No. Hurricane. Makes sense. Hurricane. Yes. That's what it meant in the old language. Yes. A big hurricane. We're going to see that they were in this hurricane for 14 days. Ooh. Oh, well. Talk about a hurricane. Yeah. Verse 15. And when the ship was caught, it could not bear up into the wind. We let her drive, meaning we let the wind take over. After all, they, could, they couldn't have their sails up in the middle no, of a hurricane. No, you don't sails in a prey. I don't know about you. I, I've been in an in a angry sea before. Me too. And I may have told you this story before. We were out on this... Oh, uh, you. You ever in the Navy? This, uh, not, not, not in the Navy. Oh. But I was on a, a fishing charter boat, and they asked us all to go below because we are getting ready to go into a storm coming back. And I remember being a kid... Opening up that that door and looking up, when I looked up, I saw a wave like yeah, up over there, your head. and then I saw a wave like right there, and I'm thinking, now how can this be? <laughs> we were right in the middle. Right. Turns out there's 50 foot swells in this little charter boat. You yeah. even the crew was getting sick. Were well, you? Yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't afraid. Yeah, Shane's going. You ain't seen nothing. I was in. Well, Atlantic. You were in the Atlantic, right, or Pacific? I was in the Pacific. But still, big, mm -hmm. big. Well, when you when you see when you see the ocean come up over the bow of an aircraft carrier, yes. Oh, that's pretty heavy seas. Yeah. Okay, you got me covered. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, and these guys are little wooden. Did boat. you go through a hurricane? <laughs> did you go through a hurricane in a small boat? No, we see those when we go around them. Well, he didn't. Yeah. Why? Now, here's the point is, why did they get caught in a hurricane? They didn't have radar. Yeah. <laughs> no. they Jason, they didn't don't be facetious. They didn't listen to What's Paul. They didn't listen to God oh, through Paul. You. you know, they, Paul said, hey, you you go and you're going to have problems. Right. No, nobody believed him. Right. Except, I guess, his disciples that were with him. But the, the point being is, they're probably saying, hey, you better listen to Paul. You know, his his coming from God. Just let's not forget who a lot of them thought all all Paul was was superstitious stuff. See, uh -huh. well they're going to learn. Verse sixteen. Mm. Now they're in the middle of this hurricane. Right. Sixteen, and running under a certain island which is called Claudia, mm. we had much work to come by the boat. In other words. We were trying our hardest to do the very best of our knowledge of being sailors to contain ourselves during this hurricane. Right. So let's not forget, they're being tossed in by the wind yep. and the sea. 17. Which when they had taken up,
they used helps. Do you know what helps are? You're in the Navy. Well, you probably didn't. Big use ropes. Them. Ropes, big ropes under the bow, under the boat. They would take from one side to the other and tie it up because they were in a wooden boat ship. But the thing is, and these waves hitting up against that, if they didn't shore it up, to help it up, yeah. they would all bust it up. Yes. Okay. Uh, undergirding the ship. Mm -hmm. And fearing least they should fall into the quicksands, the, the basically rough uh, ground, rough ground. Mm. straight sail, what does it mean to straight sail? You're in the Navy. You weren't taught this? My boat didn't have sails. Yeah. <laughs> My boat didn't have no sails. Yeah. Basically, they took up the sails. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. they put the sails out, the sails would have been shredded yes. to bits. They're in the middle of a hurricane. I know what's going on here. And so were driven. So that's how they stayed. Those helps on, and the, they're just hoping for the best. 18. And we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lighten the ship. In other words, Ooh. so they wouldn't go aground anywhere. Because at this point, they didn't know where they were. You know, so they started tossing stuff overboard. Not everything. No. But some things to lighten the load. 19, and the third day, there, this is three days of this going on now. We Now think about this of hurricanes that pass. We, we've seen recent hurricanes. Yeah. We're talking three days now yeah. being mm -hmm. under in the middle of this hurricane. Yeah. We cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. That means all the other rigging that wasn't tied down yes. or was tied down, we tossed overboard yes. to lift the load even more so. They were getting very worried here at this point. Yeah. 20. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, That's right. and no small tempest lay on us, they're still in the middle of this hurricane, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. So it got to the point. Mm -hmm. It got to the point that every sailor who's a seasoned sailor, everybody on board thought, other than Paul and his disciples with him, that they're all going to die. Okay. They're not going to make it. After all, how many times has it been recorded after five, six days, being in the middle of a hurricane, you'd think to make it? Well, it turns out, eventually, you're going to see they were in it for 14 days. Mm -hmm. But at this point, they all gave up hope. Now, you say, well, God was with Paul. Why is all this going on? Because they didn't listen to God. Now, see, this is critical for us to understand the tempest in our own lives. When God comes to you and gives you something... Don't poo-poo it. You know, you say, oh, I wouldn't do it. There's a lot of people who do. <laughs> a lot of people who do. And the thing is, it doesn't get better mm -mm. when you don't listen. No. And some people say, well, why is God that way? Being very arrogant about it. I've seen this happen. Well, why is God that He shouldn't telling God the way he shouldn't be. Who are you to tell God anything? But there's plenty of people who do. And the fact of the matter is, when God gives you something, gives you an inclination to do something, do it. No, just don't poo-poo it. Do it. I don't know how many times that I've, I've proclaimed this even in these lectures of people in the past that had things given to them that didn't do it. And it didn't turn out well for any of them, including me. I had to learn this myself. God had to break me of my arrogance. And I don't know about you, and I'm not going to speak to anybody in here, but the fact is, if we are arrogant, guess what? If we love God, or we say we want to love God, say we want to follow Him, and we're arrogant, guess what He's going to do? First thing He's going to do is break you. Yeah. Why? Because He's giving you what you really want. You want God. You want eternity. You want love. You want truth. You want blessings. Well, He's going to see that you get it. Yeah. But you know what? You ain't taking any of the world with you. Anything that you're trusting in the world to do for you, he's going to get rid of it. 
Well, that's the problem a lot of times. People want God their way. Well, yeah. Not his way. Yeah. Because you know, we don't know these sailors, you know, what they believed in. They, all kind of, we know they were from Asia Minor, more than likely, because that's where the ship, not this ship, but the Alexandria, that's where they picked them up. Yeah. So from Italy, from Rome, uh, they probably had all kinds of gods that they believed well, in. Yeah. But at this point, all the, their gods... They just went over on the side. <laughs> that was, was the dead weight they were pushing. All right. Out. What verse am I on? 21? But after long abstinence, after long period of time... Now, this is long period of time after the sailors are believing now we're doomed. Right. Paul still kept his mouth shut until the Lord intervened for Paul to speak. Listen. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, mm. ye should have hearkened unto me. <laughs> oh, I love that. And not have loosed from Crete. I told you so. Yeah. And to have gained this harm and loss. Now, I'm not going to add to the word of God here, but it's going to sound like I am. I don't really think Paul said to them, you should have listened to me. <laughs> Because that's not how Paul worked. Right. Do you think well, maybe he said, well, maybe he did. You know why? Because he, he hadn't talked about God. God yet. It seems perfectly in character to me for Paul. <laughs> to actually say that. I would think Paul would say you should have listened to God, but he didn't introduce God yet. But no. he's about to. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. 22. And now, and now, because of all this, and now I exhort you. I urge you to be of good cheer. Oh, sure. Now think about it. Right in the middle of a hurricane, they all think that they're going to die. I want you to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I, I want, you know, that sounds like Paul. I, I want you to be mm -hmm. good cheer. Now that does sound like Paul. Yeah. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Yeah. Well, they're in the middle of a hurricane. You're all going to be spared, but your ship yeah. ain't. Yeah, you have to swim for it. Well, basically, that's what you're going to have to do. 23. And there stood by me this night. Now, this is Paul proclaiming. Uh -huh. <coughs> there stood by me this night the angel of God. Now, whenever the angel of God is mentioned, yes. who does that mean? That's Jesus. Jesus Christ. Hanging the angel of God. Well, no wonder he Who is I am. In other words, I belong to. And whom I serve. That's who I serve. That's why I'm here. And he told me this, that you're going to be okay. But your ship's not. Yeah. Why? Because you didn't listen. Because you're never okay. If you would have listened, you could have got on dry land. Yeah. But no, you're going to get wet. Mm. Wetter than you are with this hurricane. Mm. 24. Saying, Christ saying, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. Again, proclaiming to us what Paul's journey was all about. He must go to Caesar. Mm -hmm. The Lord wanted him to go before Caesar. Yes, he's going. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. In other words, all those that stay with you is going to make it okay. okay. Not the ship. 25, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. I believe and trust everything that he gives me. In other words, I have the faith, and when I hear this, I know it as a fact, and I'm going to follow it, and if you follow what I'm telling you, you will be spared. Now, isn't that really sort of kind of, if you bring it to today's reality, what we're trying to do with God's children. We're trying to spare them from all the negative things that's about to happen and is happening in the world today. We're trying to spare them of all that. And, and all this stuff that's happening, they don't have to... Yes, it's going to continue to happen, but they don't have to be a part of it. In other words, mentally, physically, spiritually, they don't have to be a part of all that. They don't have to have all that worry and anger and frustration. You know. 26. How be it, we must be cast up on a certain island. Paul's saying, look, we're not getting to Italy right now. 
and we're going to lose this ship, but we're going to have to go to this certain island. Why? Because They're Paul right was here. given why, but he's not telling them why. No. Remember, we know the story, if you've ever read this before, but we know Paul had to do a certain thing to have happened to him, and also Paul had to do a certain thing to certain people on this island. Why? Because this is what God wanted. He, God, our Father, wanted the spiritual blessings that Paul had to come to this island. 27. But when the 14th night was come, now hear this, the 14th night, 14th night in the middle of a hurricane. Mm -hmm. Now, what was that that just went... Um, <clears throat> The Bahamas, here a couple years Puerto ago. Puerto Rico. Yeah, well, how many nights did they have that hurricane there? I don't know. It just leveled them. It was like five nights or something. Yeah. Fourteen nights. Well, see, but they're not stationary like an island. They're, they're not. They're blowing around. Yes, so but this the ship, there's no ship in the world that could last fourteen nights in a hurricane in their condition if it wasn't for God's uh, providence. Okay. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight, the shipmen deemed or estimated that they drew near to some country. Well, how did they know this? Remember, it was dark. They couldn't see the stars or nothing. They take soundings. That's right. You know, they, they got this rope, and after so many feet, they got knots in this rope, and they throw it over, and they see how many knots, and they count. You see how, how deep it is. Right. 28. And sounded. Well, there you go. And yeah. sounded and found it 20 fathoms. That's 120 feet. Hmm. And when they had gone a little farther, they sounded again. They threw this rope over again and yeah. checked and found it 15 fathoms, oh, 90 feet. So that tells them that they're getting they're closer and closer sure. to land. 29. Then, fearing least we should have fallen upon rocks. <laughs> they get scared here. Yeah. They cast four anchors out of the stern. In Good. the middle of a hurricane, they cast four anchors out of the stern Good. and wished for the day. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 30. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship. Now, what were they told at this point by Paul? You're going to be fine. Don't be go happy. anywhere. Stay here. You're going to lose the ship. But don't, you know, stay with me, right? Right, right. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, under the pretense as though they were uh, casting anchors out of the foreship, Paul, verse 31, said to the centurion to, and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, unless these sailors stay here, mm -hmm. ye cannot be saved. Now see, they're doing what they they think is the right thing to do. Right. They kept taking soundings, and they know that they're close to land. They can't see it, but they know they're close by their experience, mm -hmm. by their worldly experience. Well, Paul wants them to learn something here of spiritual experience. The, ex the spiritual reality of what God is saying for them to do, they need to listen to their Father, to the one and true God. And he says, look, you put these boats down and everybody gets in those boats, it's going to die. 32. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let them go and let her fall off. So, here it comes. They believed at that moment. Now think about this. Don't overlook it. They put their lives as sailors, their experience as seamen, and they let go of that and said, we're going to listen to your God, Paul. Because after all, so far, you haven't been wrong yet. So we're going to start listening. That's the best thing they could have done. Yeah. 33. Now, let's not forget, Paul said, look, you're going to be spared, but your ship's not. Now listen to what happened. 33. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat. 
saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried, or waited, and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Now, it sounds like, oh, they were fasting on the ship, and they were... They were uh, no. looking to God. No. No, they were heaving their breakfast. Exactly. Over. I mean, 14 yeah. days in a hurricane. Yeah. I mean, like I told you, I was on this charter boat with these, I guess they were seasoned seamen. I don't know. But they were all heaving it up yeah. just after a couple hours. Yeah. These 14 days. Nobody could probably hold anything down. That's right. And Paul's saying, look, you guys need to eat some. 34. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat. For this is for your health. Mm -hmm. Now, why for their health? Because Paul knows they're yeah. going to have to swim for it. Yeah. They're going to have to have some kind of strength. Right. For there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. In other words, not one person here is going to die. And why did Paul know this? Because they were listening to, to uh, our Father through Paul now. So none of you, all of you are going to be spared. Now, I'm not saying everybody was a good swimmer there, no. <laughs> but our father knew that some of them couldn't swim, and he gave a way for them to make it to shore. Listen, 35. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. What was he doing? Communion. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Okay. 36. <laughs> Now, bread doesn't necessarily mean a loaf of bread. It could also mean any kind of Oh, whatever food. they had on hand. Yeah. Okay. Chances are it was bread, though, for Paul. Very well, soggy by now. <laughs> then, well, not necessarily, because they were probably all under the inside the ship. There was 276 people there. They weren't all on deck. 36. Then were they all of good cheer. Well, they felt better. They yeah. ate something. Yeah. And they believed Paul at this point. <laughs> and they also took some meat, some food. 37. And when we were in all in the ship, 203 score and 16 souls. That's 276 people. That's right. 38. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship. Oh, and cast out the wheat into the sea. In other words, the food that they had left, yeah. they let, in other words, whatever the, that was left to go overboard, it went overboard, except for the people. Yeah. After all, why save it? Ship ain't going to make it. Nope. So let's get rid of all of it. Hey, we're full. Paul says we're all going to be spared. Let's get rid of all of it and, 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 and keep going. Right. 39. And when it was day... They knew not the land. They didn't know where they were. But they discovered a certain creek or bay with a shore into the which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. In other words, let's try to steer this ship now into this bay that we can see, 40. Right. And when they had taken up the anchors, remember they were anchored at this point, which... I can't tell me it wasn't by the hand of God in the middle of a hurricane to drop these anchors at the back of the ship and it didn't just go to pieces. Tell me that wasn't by the hand of God. I don't know. That's pretty standard procedure. Really? In yeah. the middle of a hurricane? No. The standard procedure is what they're doing before to let the wind and the waves take them. No, you they got to they got close to land. They got, want, yeah, they got worried. They got out. They got worried. Well, yeah. But the thing is. Paul didn't say drop the anchor. No. They were using, again, their worldly That's what said, ways of doing it. Standard operating procedure. Could have been. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed they themselves. They committed themselves unto the sea, once again. Really what they're doing is committing themselves unto God. And loose the rudder bands mm. and hoisted up the mainsail. Now they're bringing up the sail mm. to the wind and made toward the shore. Okay. Let's beeline it towards the shore. That's a good plan. 41. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground. Boom. Beeline right for that right for that bay. That's what I do. 
and the fore part, the bow of the boat, yeah. stuck fast right in the sand. There you go. And remained unmovable. Good. But the hinder, the back part, right. what do you call it, stern? Yes. Mm -hmm. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves, oh, which well. tells you it was up to that point. Yes. You know, now it's getting beat not only with the, the, the winds and the hurricane and all this stuff, right. which is probably subsiding at this point right. because it got them where they needed to go. Right. But now these waves are beating up against the back part of this ship, and it's just beating it all to pieces. You say, well, why Why not just, they're on land, why not just jump, jump off, off the front? That's jump off I the do. front. But that's not what happened. Oh, ding dong. This is why, this is why the boat was broken apart. Listen, <laughs> 42, and the soldiers' counsel or advice was to kill the prisoners. Kill them all. <laughs> Lest any of them should swim out and escape. They didn't want, because after all, if the prisoners escape on these guys, they, they would have to be done. killed. Oh, man. What so they that? said, hey, let's, let's just do them all in. But the centurion, in verse 43, the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea. Jump overboard. Which tells you it may have been stuck, but they couldn't jump on land. No, For whatever no. reason. Maybe it was rocks or something. I don't know. No, the keel's like 20, 30 feet deep. I, mean, been, they I don't know how get, big this still... thing was. All I know is it held 276 people, so it was yeah. pretty good size. Yes. So they which oh. could swim cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. Verse 44 to complete. I am going to finish today. Good. And the rest, and this is why I broke up. And the rest, some on boards, and some on broken pieces mm -hmm. of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land, even those that couldn't swim. Right. That's why the ship was all busted up, so that they could latch onto some and right the away. That's right. So. What's the point of all this? I don't know. It was a good story, though. It was a good story. Yeah. You don't know the point? You should know the point. Oh. But being obedient. Don't go in the middle of hurricanes on a boat. Be obedient. Oh. The thing is, all they had to do was listen. <clears throat> now, yes, good story. But it's a profound story. And if you <coughs> if you bring this this hurricane, this tempest, mm -hmm. this... this uh, uproar in their lives and bring it to to us today we all have uproars in our lives mm -hmm. from time to time but we never walk it alone and the fact is our father wants us to rely on him 100 percent paul relied paul didn't have a problem with any of this <laughs> paul didn't have no fret when 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 it god no told hungry. him go to caesar say caesar you want to go to paul knew at that moment He's getting there. Yeah. And and Paul told them, look, if you listen to me, what God gives me, you'll all be spared. But if you don't listen to what God gives me, so what God gives us today is his word. Mm -hmm. It's the same principle. If we don't listen to his word, mm -hmm. because it doesn't say it doesn't say just to study to show thyself and prove, although it does say that. But you got to do something with it. You know, he wants us all to be doers, not doubters. And by doing it, it's, uh, it's wide open. I mean, there's no restrictions whatsoever what we can do. Because we all have different avenues. Every single person in here has a different avenue that we're doing. And the fact is, we can do something in the avenue in which we are at right now but if we don't guess what the work's still going to get done they'll just use somebody else well you know what i'm selfish i don't want him to use somebody else if he wants to use me for something i want to do it and i don't care what it is whatever he wants him to do i want to do and there lies the problem with some people say well i don't know what he wants me to do let's study Study and pray. 
Now, just like um, you said a little earlier, Ross, about um, something about we're looking at, pray about it or something. I can't remember what it was. But I was, I was on his question. Yeah. I said, yeah, to go ask God. Oh, yeah. Did you find your answer, by the way? A little bit. In Scripture. Right. You're going to study later. Look up. Look mm -hmm. it up for stuff. Okay. But, yeah. well, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Yeah. But the point being is, with all this, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good story. But it's, if, if you look at it, because some people, that's all they look at it as. Right. That's for example. And I'm not saying you are. No. I'm just saying yeah. uh, some people look at it, well, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a cool story. That's yeah. for an example, though, for us. So you well, you've got to take it, you've got to take God's Word in terms that everything that is written is for you. Mm -hmm. Directly at you. No matter what the story is. You got to be able, and the only way you can do that is how through the Holy Spirit. That's why we always pray, Lord, open up our eyes that we can see, our ears that we can hear. In other words, so that we can absorb what you're giving us through this story. Mm -hmm. How can we relate to it? And if you can't relate to it, you didn't get the story. Mm -hmm. You didn't understand, because everything's written is for our admonition, as it said, for our examples. So we need to take what we're given and to do something with it. Well, it's loud and clear to me to not only hear God, but obey God. And as long as you do that, you're going to be spared. Now, how much of a relief is that, knowing that no matter what happens in this world, I mean, no matter what happens, no matter who wins elections, no matter who takes over, no matter yeah. blah, 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 yep. we're going to be okay. That's right. Because we trust God. And and this world and who's ever running it can say, well, I'm going to do this to you, I'm going to do that to you, I'm going to take this from you, I'm going to whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> they can do whatever they want to do. Because I know Father will always provide us a way of being able to do for his children. Always. I pity the ones that don't understand that. Because they are really hurting and suffering. Mm. And they're word sick. Why do you think we have the problems we got today? That's Why are they behaving the way they are? They feel that there's no hope. And they're reaching out to the world for hope. Right. They're reaching out to a certain individual for hope. I'm talking about individual of this planet yeah. for hope. There's not a person on this planet that can give you hope. Not true hope. Not eternal hope. And that's what our Father wants to give us. Are there any questions about what we covered or anything else? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for your word as you have given it to us, as you have proclaimed to us, as you have opened to us, Father, the the most precious thing in the world is to love you. And by loving you, we love your children. That we follow you every step of the way. And we truly, we don't just say the words, but we truly do trust you with our lives, with our eternal souls. And that's a trust that surmounts everything else. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity of today and the blessings. I pray for everyone here today and their families, and I pray for everyone on YouTube and all their families that you watch over all of us. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. And forevermore, we will give you all glory, honor, and praise. For we do love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths, with all our souls. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And to God be the glory.